let's let's tell everybody right now. Parentalrights.org. What is parentalrights.org? It's a nonprofit organization that is fighting some egregious, pernicious legislation right now, which would undermine a parent's, a good parent's right and duty to raise their own children as they see fit. But then I started doing a little research, getting online, going to all the websites, and thinking, whoa, whoa right. this is real. This isn't hype, Susanna. Right. right. Well, and that's why we encourage people not to simply take our word for it, because there'll be a lot of people completely freaked out by what we're going to share with them today and think, this is too much. This can't possibly be happening. Please go to parentalrights.org. Check it out for yourself. You can go to the UN website. Look up the treaty that we're going to discuss right now. Look it up for yourself. Research it for yourself. You do not have to take our word for it. Okay, let's get right into it then. UNCRC. What is it? UNCRC. Okay, the CRC stands for the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And it's an international treaty that has already been ratified by 193 nations. You know, at the outset, Convention on the Rights of a Child, it sounds like a really good thing. In fact, my husband and I, when we first learned about this, thought, well, that's a, a noble calling to protect children because they are egregiously uh, neglected and harmed and exploited in other countries. However, the more we looked into it, uh, my husband and I got very alarmed and just like you we were very naive and when we realized that this treaty would threaten our right to raise our children as we see fit that's when we got off the couch and got involved now the um, the thing that we have to realize is that everything this treaty tries to do we already have laws in this country to protect our children right. that um, you know monitor uh, the parent-child relationships. So our country has nothing to gain from this treaty. However, what we do have is everything to lose, that's the right, right to raise our own children. Okay, let me interrupt um, you for a moment because yeah. that's the question I was going to ask you. There's already laws that have been implemented, you know, years, decades ago mm -hmm. for the protection of our rights as a parent. You know, why now all of a sudden, I need to uh, comprehend that. Why did this all procure, the procurement of it, why all of a sudden? Okay. It has to do with the fact that it's an international treaty. According to our Constitution, treaties trump all state laws. Right. And so the vast majority of every single law that uh, applies to families are state laws. So if we were to ratify this treaty, then with one fell swoop, all of that work and all of that legislation right. would be superseded. Right. What this treaty does is it gives our government the authority, mm -hmm. not well, not only the authority to uh, both monitor and direct the decisions that are made within American families, but it also obligates them so that our government would be bound by this treaty to interfere. Wow, this is serious. This is real serious. Please don't touch that dial. We're coming right back. Well, there you go. Explain ratification. Okay. Um, ratification means enforce it. Force our judges to rule on this treaty. Make us have to obey this treaty. Right now, we have a judge, in, um, because a previous administration signed it in, signed the treaty, we have a judge in New York that's already tr trying to impose this on his courts. Now, if it's ratified, every court will have to enforce this and it'll be imposed upon us, and that's what we're fighting against. Okay, Valerie, I kind of would like to think that Gloria and I are, are pretty uh, mature and responsible, good parents. So, if this does get ratified, how will this affect? Gloria and Michael Crawford? Well, based on the way that cases have been ruled upon in countries where they have ratified this, I can lay out some very possible scenarios, uh, very probable scenarios. Um, and we need to understand that there are articles within the treaty that guarantee to children what they call mm -hmm. fundamental right, things like freedom of association, freedom of expression, uh, right to privacy. Again, they sound good on the surface, mm -hmm. but they're very ambiguous. And so we look to other countries on how these cases have been ruled. You've got two daughters. Yes. You were telling me before the show. Love of my life. Oh, I'm sure. The loves, I say loves, <laughs> plural, loves of my life. All right. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. All right, let's say that your daughter, one of your daughters may be hanging out with an older male of sort of unsavory character, if you know what I mean. And, <laughs> and, uh, That's not going to happen in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> not in your house. Well, let's hope not. Not on my watch. <laughs> um, well, let's say you're on your watch and you say, you know what? This person has a proven right. track record. This is someone I don't want you associating with. You could find yourself facing a social worker um, and going before uh, a federal case, uh, a federal judge, for interfering on 
Article 16's right to freedom of association. Well, <laughs> say that your daughter wants to join a, a gang or a racist organization, um, a cult, you would not have the ability, uh, depending on what the treaty calls the evolving capacities of a, of a child to make their own decisions, you would not have the ability anymore to interfere. You're, all the children would be guaranteed what's called um, mm -hmm. the right to, uh, right to be heard. And what this does is it gives them the right to seek government review on every single parenting decision you make. Right. So say your kids go through a rebellious stage. You know, a lot of, a lot of kids, kids do. do. Yes, they do. This yeah. would open up a Pandora's box. Wow. And that's the issue is that why we have to go the extra mile and actually get an amendment made to our Constitution is because in our country's history up to this point, Parental rights is, is not explicit in our Constitution. It's always been an implied thing as our inalienable rights, and the judges have been ruling accordingly. Right. However, in recent years, they have not. And they've been ruling against parental rights for good parenting. We're not talking about bad parenting, I mean, right. for good exactly. parenting. And the only way, because this trend shows nothing but going up and not going down. So the only way to ensure that these judges are ruling properly is to actually amend our constitution with parental rights. It has to be said. They have the judges literally have to be forced to give us our parental rights because right. they're not doing it automatically anymore. Okay, then let me follow up with this question. Then, so if we do get this amendment passed, okay, what happens then? I guess you two ladies can kind of go ahead, go home, excuse me, and put your feet up and just say no. call it quits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't. I wish it were so. Right, yes. well, tell me. Unfortunately, not only is there the external threat of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, but internally what's happening is there's a peculiar institution called customary international law, whereby judges uh, are looking to the international community to make rulings on cases. And as I mentioned, mm -hmm. with 193 nations supporting this treaty, this the, the trend in the international community is to place the burden of proof on the parent to prove they're a fit parent if any kind of a question comes up, if a kid goes to a social worker. So this treaty reverses the trend of assuming that a parent has a child's best interest in heart to siding with uh, the government or a social worker, any case that a child might bring up. So there's that threat internally, and as Susanna mentioned, there are more and more cases now where judges are ruling in favor of the child and against uh, parents' rights to, to make decisions. Let's get it started. Right, make sure that I totally comprehend this, okay? I need to. I'm sitting here, my, my mind's kind of spinning right now. How else will it affect me? If this gets passed, how else will it affect me and Gigi Michaela and my lovely wife, Gloria? Um, the government would have the right to interfere on decisions that affect religion, discipline, education. You would lose the right to uh, insist your children go to church with you. You're allowed to, quote, give advice. That's all you're allowed to do. A child can have an abortion without the parent's knowledge. That, that's the right to privacy. Biblical discipline is completely out the door. Um, Lots of things. My but, mother would be rolling, I, I know she is, she's rolling over in her grave right now, Arizona, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Michael, get ready, we're going to church. Yeah. So you're forget saying, that. forget that. Yeah. Well, unless a child yeah. wants to go. All they have to do is say, I don't want to go. There was a case uh, not too long ago in our own country, without having ratified the CRC, where uh, the parents wanted to bring the child to church on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And the judge ruled that they had no right to make this child uh, go to church uh, more than once a week. They took the child away, and the parents had to agree to only take the child to church on Sunday. Uh, otherwise, they, they would again lose custody of their child. Hey, tell me now. Say that if our lame duck Congress if you would, uh, lets this kind of like, they're, they're kind of sleeping and it automatically gets kind of pushed through them without really their total understanding of it. What would happen then? Well, what we anticipate is they're gonna try and sneak this treaty through right. in November and December before the new Congress comes in. And that's the biggest threat right now. Parentalrights.org has a fabulous piece of legislation already on the floor to prevent that. I need to really stress this, that the, the, temp, the immediate need we have is to block this thing uh, being snuck through, if you will, in November or December. There's a bill called Senate Bill 519 that we only need 34 senators who will agree to block the passage of the UNCRC. We have 31. McCain and Kyle have both said that they will support blocking 
the CRC from passing, but we need three more senators. Okay, but and they so, haven't yet. They haven't yet signed. McCain and... and uh, oh, yeah, they, they, they well, haven't they have. signed the amendment. Okay. Remember I said there was another piece of yes, legislation. That's yes. this immediate stopgap to get this thing snuck through. So there's not signing the CRC, which is Senate Bill 519 that McCain and Kyle are supporting. Okay. And then there's the longer process of getting the amendment. And so until that happens, we've got to safeguard that our lame duck Congress in November and December won't sneak this through. And you know, one of the things that viewers can do is if they know people in other states, if they could go on our website, parentalrights.org, get informed and let people in other states will block passage in November and December. Okay. Ladies, we only have one minute. I tell you, I could, I could talk for three hours with you oh, about yeah. this. This is a very yeah. serious topic. Yes. But with the one minute remaining in the Michael Proper Get Excited show, what do you want to leave with the viewing audience today? What's the most important thing that you'd have to say they have to remember? Susanna? That one person can make big changes. One person got prayer taken out of the school while we in churches says it'll never happen. One person has given the country a run for its money to, to get in God we trust out of our Pledge of Allegiance. So what would one person standing up now be able to do? A 16-year-old girl got in contact with parentalrights.org through her homeschooling group. She found out about it. She got a group together, only had three families attend. I was one of them. I know you were doing this show because one 16-year-old girl got involved. One person can make a difference. We have to get up and get off our pews, get off our couches, and make a difference. Praise God. Go to the website, make a phone call. It's real easy. You just right. call your, your, they have all the phone numbers for your congressman. Just call, say, this is so-and-so from this certain district. I'd like you to support Senate Bill 519 to block the UNCRC. It's easy to do.